Hello and welcome to this update to Hairstrand Designer, now at version 1.28. So when you open the application you'll see this message, due to the nature of the software, moving away from the application could cause it to close. If this happens, reload the application and press F11 to restore your previous settings. Press F12 or generate acts as a quick save. Please avoid exporting textures to the same folder as the application as they will be moved to local app data automatically. Press enter or click to proceed. Now that's just to do with the texture stability so don't worry too much about that. The main thing to worry about is when you export your files, don't export them to here because they'll move automatically to local app data and that's part of the functionality of uh, saving in a sandbox type of uh, thing that comes with the ID I use to develop this. Okay, so you want to save to like desktop or another folder, your working folder if you're making a character. So I'm just going to cancel that for now. Um, some of the new features, there's a few optimizations on if you change uh, something then it will like uh, affect whatever maps it affects, like uh, variation here. So if I've got frizz on and I've generated these maps uh, and I change the frizz only, it's only going to affect the frizz map itself. So let's have a look at that because this is a new thing that I've just added and it just adds kind of grayscale noise based on the level of this. So the lower the, the, lower the frequency, then the less uh, noisy it will be and less uh, change in, in tone. So if I increase this, you can see the frizz map's gone gray again. So it means it needs to be generated. So I just click generate. So I've put, up, put this up quite high, so let's see how that looks now. You can see it looks more frequent and more noisy. So that's a new thing that I've just added for frizz effect. If you want to mix this into your shader or into your color maps, then that's cool. Um, what else is new is I've created these mixers. Now mixers are paths that have been predefined for hair strands. So this one, like mixer one kind of goes straight, then kind of wiggles a bit, as you can see, as I increase the amount. Uh, the offset here just pushes it downwards. So as it, as it sits at zero, that's actually using the actual path that I've created from zero to 4096. Uh, so if you were to increase this to like 3800, uh, oops, that's the number of strands. I'm always doing these backwards. So it's three, eight, zero, zero. You can see it's getting a little bit more of the path. In fact, let's just change all of these to the maximum. So we can see full well what's happening. So as you see, as I push this offset down, uh, as I move it to the right, it pushes things down a bit, right? So that's just an extra thing there. Uh, the second mixer pushes to the left at the bottom. And as you move it down, it kind of goes away. Because it's kind of pushing the, the path downwards. And the third one pushes to the right. So you can mix these up however you like. And it's pretty nice for the, the clumping effect as well. So I'm going to taper that a little bit, uh, bend it to the right. Increase the number of strands, uh, do some reduction. Okay, so that's going to be 34 to 6. Uh, <coughs> I'll override the last two strands so I get a 2 and a 1 just for flyaways. <coughs> I've also got, uh, I've added in this offset control so you can sort of compact up some of these strands a bit or even overlap them if you wanted. So I'm going to compact these up so later I could composite like a, a texture page. Um, in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll have this kind of control when I add like manual override of like the strand positions and the set position. So you can click on a set, move it around and things like that and then place everything where you want it, then generate. So that's going to be a good a good bit in the future. So it's take, take a while to develop it, but this is so far so good. So I could I'll move that there, whatever. I can use the, the set distancing all the same. Uh, I can make bunches overlap like this and then come up with a kind of unique little strand set here. So I might want something like that. Move this over a bit actually. 
uh, increase the number of strands. So I've got 147 strands. Let's just increase that a little bit more so we get more here. Uh, the thickness, uh, fading. This is a new thing. So I've brought fade in. You can see at the top it blends into the background color. And for masking, that also means that it will fade to black uh, in case you want it to actually affect the alpha uh, channel itself. Uh, now, this doesn't generate the alpha maps or any alpha. You have to mix your mask in or put them into your shader and work them that way. It's just, it's just because the, the export of alpha from this uh, software isn't great. It doesn't do accurate levels but I'm working on it I, I want to be able to sort of combine the the mask map into the color map so it produces you know the the opacity already in there uh, which has been requested so anyway I'll go for something like that a little bit of tapering so it looks like there's some clumping going on uh, I'll generate I'm just going to generate all the maps and then click generate or G so it used to be enter but I've changed that to G because enter uh, I'm going to use for something else, maybe. <clears throat> so the more strands you've got and the more maps you've enabled, the longer this generate is going to take. And if you're using a whole lot of strands, like maybe more than 300, it's a good idea, a good idea to generate a few of these maps at a time just to preserve some memory. Right, so now I can go to the, each, each of these maps. There's the Frizz map, uh, or AO map, and we can post-process blur this up now. So this is like apply blur, and it's at 0.25, which is kind of a good setting. And then you just click apply blur, and you'll see that it's just slightly blurred things a little bit. And it's not the best blur algorithm, so you might want to still blur things up in Photoshop or GIMP, whatever you're using. So there's the flow map, depth map, ID map, and this is uh, set base, uh, strand based ID. If actually, wait a minute, that's mixed round. That should be strand based, but set based. Okay, so if I click this, you'll see that it, the ID map itself has just been uh, sent back to generate so if I click that now, okay, I'll just take a note that I've got these the, uh, the wrong way around because that should be like that. Okay, that's easy to fix. Uh, color map, based on the colors here. And you can see the number of strands used. A mask map, a normal map. And the normal map, you want you might want to use like the oil paint filter in Photoshop because it does a nice job of getting rid of these jaggy edges. Uh, and I'm working on ways to get around that, either using the blur or just the way that it draws them. I'm going to try and add in some anti-lacing as it draws. It means it's going to take longer to generate. That's the only drawback. And I'm trying to avoid things taking too long. Um, so you may have to post-process things a little bit. Right, so that's um, that's the basics of it. If it crashes on you, like you navigate away, you come back and it's like it's not open anymore, that's a kind of fail-safe device so that it doesn't end up like saving, I don't know, bad, bad texture memory or something. So it would just close out. But when you open it back up and you press F11, hopefully you get everything back. So F11. And it gives you this message, loading previous settings, please wait, can take time. So it's loading in, oh, there we go, that was pretty quick actually. Um, so it's loading in a lot of settings, but it's not loaded in all of the maps. That's the only thing. And I guess if I disengage and re-engage these, I click generate, hopefully. Hopefully nothing's broken. Normally it would try and save the, the textures as well, but um, again, it's just hard to predict what it's going to do. So 
but I managed to get everything back, which is good. We've also got the the randomization uh, seed here as well, if we ever need that. So if you save your maps out, uh, let's, in fact, let me just do random and it gives it this random seed number. So every time I click this, you see it's active, it gives it a random seed and then I can switch it off to keep that seed value. I can also uh, press F1 if I want to edit that value. So if I want to give it 9876543321, right, that's now a new uh, seed that it's generated. So I'll click on the preview to see how that looks. You can sort of click that to see roughly what it's coming up with. Uh, variation also gives you a bit of randomness and pressing space also shuffles this number right so you can do things like that either way just to get some difference uh, so I'll generate again this time we're just going to do a few strands so it's quick okay so I've generated frizz, AO, flow, depth, ID, colour mask map, normal map, and RGB. And then when you click this, it saves them one by one. Again, don't save to this folder, save to a different one. So I've got a little temp folder that I use here. And I'll just uh, save them as 25 for the 25th of May. So it goes through each map. <coughs> Then it's asking me to save the H HSD, H Hairstrand Designer um, project file. Now this is a work in progress, so I usually just save that as 25 as well. And you'll see that uh, there's no ability to load that project file back in, but it just gives you, for now, it gives you the seed value in case you come back in and the seed value's changed or uh, you want your settings back, then take a screenshot, things like that, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to be working on that in the next version, for sure. That's definitely due. I've also added this uh, hex code here. Now, it's not editable yet, but it, it will give you the hex value of the current color uh, in case you're trying to hex uh, match something up. If you know the hex value, then you can, you can try and match that here using your RGB and things. Um, not entirely accurate because you see this only works in steps of two so once I give you the ability to, to edit that you can get the accurate color uh, clicking on these uh, fills up the history so if you want you know different colors here and you click on those it fills up the history here until it gets to the end then it just starts going round to the front again you can see like here Okay, so every time you click on those, that fills up history. Um, this here is hue mode for the flow mode. This is an experimental feature. So if you've got your flow map on, let me just turn these off, generate, and this gives you a flow map based on the the direction that it's going. So to see that a bit better, I'm just gonna add loads of waviness. Let's bring the strands up and move things around a bit more. See, I've got all these spacings adding in different offsets. Okay, so roughly back to where it was. Let's change that background because that looks terrible. Um, let's go for some colors. Like right, okay, so generate the flow map. Okay, it's doing 195 strands. You see the flow map basically just uses the color spectrum to say what way it's going. So that's quite that's quite cool, I think. Um, color map, let's generate that. Uh, when you click generate, it's not gonna regenerate maps that have already been generated unless you've made changes. So that's a good optimization thing. Um, so basically, as soon as you start changing something and you go back to that map, it's going to be read, read it out until your color map, not currently generated or settings have changed, please en enable and click generate. So like, you know, these are old. 
it's basically what it's saying is that all this is old now, um, just in case. But I've, I thought it's a good idea to leave it there in case you want to just like go back and analyze things and see what you kind of previously did, um, as opposed to it just being blank. So now when you generate, it's only going to generate what's gray. So we've got flow map and the color map and uh, all that good stuff so i hope you enjoy the new update i will be working on uh, saving the project file so it saves all your settings as opposed to just pressing f11 which restores your previous setting in case of a, a crash or something um once in fact once uh, you you've saved this out um it does actually create a save file, but there's, n there's no real way to, to reload it, I think, in theory. But I'm thinking you could potentially go into your local app data, find that file that it generates when you press F11, and like keep it somewhere. And then you could always replace it and press F F uh, F11 to get it back. Um, when you generate, basically, it's the same as pressing F12, and that saves it. And then F11 restores that, that save file. Um, and that save file is kept in your local app data folder under here, Strand Designer, whatever version you're using. So that's basically a little workaround. But I don't want it to be that hacky, so I will work on the project file very soon. I've promised it so many times, but I wanted to add these new features and you know give you a bit more control of things. Um, and I hope you enjoy using these. Uh, the frizz, fading, thickness control, and the variation, tapering, things. So it gives you a bit more of a nice result. Let's go and generate that again. I want to see what happens here just to show you that it doesn't look like that. That's just an optimized effect. Okay, click on that color map. Oh, wait a minute. Previewer doesn't, all right, the previewer doesn't match the color map perfectly. Um, that's really only because of I think that is a bit strange why it would follow that so much. Thank you. So they're all at 3800 the variation. Okay, so this variation slider is it's got its own randomness. So I guess let me just switch that off. I guess when you've got something where the strand is short here, and then you generate, it's basically assigning new randomness based on this variation value. So it's not giving you exactly what you see. So don't expect it to be one to one. There will be times like here, like you will have to generate again, um, and it's not going to give you one to one exactly what you're seeing. You know, there's a, a certain limit to what it can actually show you. Um, so you have to take it with a pinch of salt, I guess. And if you say, "Oh, the preview looks nothing like the generated map," that's kind of um, uh, the nature of the program. Let me generate these. So you see they're a little bit longer than the previewer. So it's not exactly one to one. And, and depending on the number of strands as well, it's going to look different because the previewer only shows eight maximum per set. Uh, it does take into consideration some of the reduction value and that kind of thing. You see, even if I reduce the amount here, it's because these two have got overrides. Okay, so it's, it takes a little while to maybe get your head around it first time because there's a lot more controls being added as time goes by. But if you come into this fairly early, then you'll know that it's plain sailing. So I'll just boot it up again just to show you <coughs> exactly that side of it. And there's plenty of videos that show you the progressive side of this as well. So you've got your number of strands and the reduction, which is how many strands it loses per set as it goes to the right. And it tells you these values here. So 18 
minus 2 becomes 16, minus 2 becomes 14, minus 2 becomes 12, and so on. So you can work out what you want that way. Uh, if you're trying to get just a single flyaway strand here, you can just go to the absolute counts uh, and change that to 1 and that to 1. That will give you two single strands. Change the background here, you can change your tones and thicknesses. So I think it's good to have fun with it for a bit, get used to some of the, the functions and generate a couple of maps. And then when you're ready, you can sort of do a batch of maps. So it's a good idea to maybe do like the first uh, five, if you're going to batch all of them out, uh, just en enable the first five here, <coughs> generate those. <coughs> and instead of exporting them out one by one, so you can do that, you can export them one by one here if you wanted. Um, uh, otherwise, you just choose this button and it exports them all one by one. Um, you can see when I cancel it goes to the next one and so on. And also when you use this it tries to save the HST file uh, which is a work in progress so that's just to make sure that everything's working. So I've nothing more to cover uh, in this version. I will be working on the, the project saving next and the hex value maybe improving the blur algorithm if possible if not just use photoshop because it's not the best thing uh, it works nice for the AO map but everything else it's not great um, and then I'll be working on the manual set placement and curve control which means you, you have the ability to make new, stra uh, new sets and move them around and that will be a while um, but that will be maybe, maybe next month hopefully end of June or something like that in place but otherwise this is a pretty stable version now and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it uh, I'm also going to give you control of the mixer paths at some point so these paths that I've predefined and uh, when I've been making it I'm going to give you control of those like control points and then you can you know get into the edit these you know be a little kind of edit button uh, let you get in a different room or something or this will become like an edit panel and you can you know, move those around, uh, anything else as well, it'd be pretty cool. Um, Alright, so once again, thanks for watching, thanks for buying, and thanks for promoting this. I hope it becomes part of uh, your workflow. If there's any features you want to see, feel free to ask. Uh, please take it with a pinch of salt and use it in conjunction with Photoshop for the time being, until I've got a lot of uh, the the things I ironed out. I recommend using the oil paint filter in Photoshop for uh, fixing up particularly like the normal map because it might look a little bit kind of harsh at the edges. I mean it's not too bad when you're zoomed out and it's got map mapping and things like that and you know in your uh, renderer whether it's Unreal Engine, Unity or Marmoset Toolbag it does tend to iron out some of these uh, noisy artifacts that might uh, look uh, apparent like here and maybe in some cases here um, so definitely post process things up in Photoshop if you really feel you want to and I recommend oil paint filter or a little bit of Gaussian blur uh, as opposed to using this blur setting okay so once again thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy using the software and look out for the next version which will likely be version 1.29 coming in June bye for now